Queens in Amesbury. Now you, some of you out there are thinking, well, I have this 112. Well, this is a tough house, huh? It had a really tough house. I remember bowling there years ago, and what you hit, you deserved every pin you knocked down. So that 112 was probably good for 120 plus most places. But well, what uh, makes some houses tougher than others? Well, a lot of people they use a lot of different slip agents and stuff like that. You know, keep the pin decks clean and and stuff like that. Not that Lafayette, you know, doesn't do some of those things, but. Um, you know, the old sidewalls, they, they use a, a lively rubber on the sidewall to keep the pins bounce off. A lot of different things, but... Uh, the rubber can, can have a significant impact, can Absolutely, it? absolutely. And of course, you can't, the uh, plastic pins now that really fly right. in their own right, so... All right, Brian Fuller took down 10 in the first box. Leaves two standing here, leaves one standing here, just the 10 pin. And I talked about Brian's average, but... He went someplace else to, to try out, and I believe it was at maybe the Beverly, Beverly Bowler mat. And ready, folks, this 112 average bowler, mm -hmm. bowl five games, hits 691. Woo! <laughs> That's 140 <laughs> average, just shy of 140. So. Yeah, so it does make a difference. <laughs> Big difference. Okay. All right. Mike Morgan up in lane three, leaving the four horsemen to the left. One, two, four, and seven. It's got to go after a brief pause. I think Almost. it was deciding, huh? It was. Decided not to fall back into the seven pin. <laughs> I know. And it's a 10. Matches Brian's 10. Interesting story here. Uh, Mike was the leading, uh, the leader in the roll-off at 7.15. Wow. But he just flew in. They had the world tournament, team tournament up in Canada. He just flew with the Logan this morning. Wow. And flew up here to New Hampshire. The Lakeside Lanes, and uh, we had the alternate, which is Jimmy Barber, waiting in the wings in case he couldn't make it. Right. But he's here, and we appreciate it. All right, he's taken out eight on so far in this, in lane four. And they bowl for a solid week, the teams up in Canada. Every day, several matches each day. So Do you know how many matches? Uh, no, I don't. Maybe we can get that information later on, but it's a lot. I know that. And, uh, We'll see if that took his toll on uh, on Mike. Yeah. You know, before a big match, how much, how many days prior to would you like to rest your arm? Uh, I would like at least a couple days after. You know, depending on how much bowling you've done in the meantime. If you're just bowling a three-game league, I don't think you need that much rest. But something like that, I mean, well, my arm would be like four inches longer, I think, <laughs> right now. Another 10 box for Brian. He's in 29 through 3. They have a, a roster of uh, seven or eight guys, so they switch people right. in and out. So maybe if they knew he was going to try to get back here for the show, they might give him a rest. Just to All right, Brian Fuller taking down eight. Well, if he has the three and the six. If he converts this, watch out. The roof's coming off. He has a lot of rooters. Boom, and he does. After four, Brian Fuller is at 39. It is, no problem splitting the three and the six. First mark of the match. Michael Morgan with the spread eagle. Pull on the head pin. Michael has a high single of 212. That's amazing. Both him and his brother, Tommy Morgan. Both great Candlepin bowlers. Runs in the family, huh? Yeah. Something in the genes, the bowling genes. Bowling genes, huh? <laughs> Mike just waiting for this wood to settle. If you folks at home want more information on Candlepin Bowling, you can go to www.candlepinbowling.com. And he finishes with the seven box on that. That's true, and that website will also update you in case you missed the show. After the show has shown, we, Danny Lorshell keeps our website up to date and he'll have the results on the website. So tune in to www.candlepinbowling.com. 510 for Mike Morgan, piece of wood out in front. You can probably use that. Yes, yes, this is the five. This is that king pin. Going for the 10 box. And he gets it. 
After four, it is 39-36. Brian Fuller leads by three. Brian has a high triple of 4-12 as he takes down eight here, leaving the six and 10. Gains a 11 pin advantage over Mike Morgan early in the match. Looking for two in a row. Oh, sliding by the six pin. I wasn't going to mention this, but I guess I will. What's up? I bowled against Brian's dad and his uncle. So well, how'd you make up? I whipped him. <laughs> I whipped him. <laughs> of course, but why do I even bother to ask, right? <laughs> They're in the audience, so I say really quiet. <laughs> No, that's dating yeah. me a little bit, but they're great guys. Maybe we ought to bring them up here. Balls. Oh, no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> the power of the microphone. <laughs> Absolutely, right? <laughs> oh, great out. All right. 66 to 6. Michael Morgan has a high single of 212. He's taking down a couple here. He's down by 11, trying to close the gap. Oof. At least four standing now. Still looking for his first mark. He's got the 1, 8, 6, and 10 back there. Walks away with eight. Mike Morgan looking for a mark. Well, oh, make up a spare eight. here. Very make up a spare. Concentrating on the three. Missed the three. Chances of making it are slim and none. And slim just left down. <laughs> oh, off the wall. Is it going to go? No, it's not. Well, he's got that wood to play with. Just barely caught the three pin. Almost came back for the five. Let's take a replay. Replay you out for the ten box here, though. Look at the replay of that. Just barely catches the three, but almost off the left side wall and back for the five. Okay, after six, Brian Fuller leads. 5-12, He takes down. Eight here, aiding his cause as the nine and ten back there. Yeah, with some wood to play with. Good play. Should be no problem. Oh, it, oh spoke, spoke too, too soon. soon. <laughs> oh. I don't usually do that either. I've been around this game long enough to know that nothing is served. <laughs> Pinning well. He's only left two pins standing, two nine boxes. Everything else was ten. Wow. And he's got one mark. The only mark so far of the match. You see Brian's high triple at 412. Half Worcester left. Four seven and a close to the right. And they all going down. Ooh, with exception of one. Almost converted that half Worcester. Great effort there. Doesn't want to leave anything standing. And he does it. All right, after eight. Ryan Fuller is at 86. Here you see it plays on the inside. Ball goes down and takes out the 4-7, and everything goes but that three. Michael Morgan. Out of length. Oh, big ball. Almost gets the strike. Just leaves the 10 standing. Nope. I've always said this is the toughest one for the right hander. See Mike's high triple of 474. Oh, sliding moves off to the left. No, I, I'm not making excuses for Mike, and he'd be the first one to use it, but I have to think that that week of bowling and Cannon flying back and getting up here. Yeah. And knowing Mike, I'm sure they didn't go to bed at 9 o'clock. And, and it must have been an early flight. <laughs> you know? Yeah. A lot of fans here to support him. No, make up a eight here. falls late, or the nine falls late rather. Just a three pin, a little guide to the left and a piece of wood. Nails it. His first mark. 
There you go, final two frames. And after eight, it is 86-74. Brian Fuller ahead by 12. Now, Brian wants to put at least one mark up, force Mike to get a good fill and another mark in the last two. Whoa. He knocks down everything but the 10. Coming through with a lot of power on that one. Yeah, that wood turned a little bit, too. He doesn't like that one at all. Kind of shook his head. Not an easy spare. Yes. Gets it anyway. Nonetheless, after nine, he's at 96. Crucial fill right here. He wants seven or eight and possibly another mark, and that would force Mike to come out as well. Missing to the left. Some of those horsemen are going to fall to wow. the left. Good break there. Leaves the one seven ten high low jack. That's right. Now, which way do you go? How do you how do you nail this? Well, how you, do you take down a high low jack? You just got to shoot for that head pin, and hopefully you're going to be a little bit right or left. It, it's going to take one. The ball's going to take the other. All right, yeah. takes down the one and seven. Yeah. Yeah. Ball missed the ten pin. That sets up a tight finish. Oh, the finish as well, pin. though. After ten, he's at one thirteen. Left two pins standing the entire game. And really, he didn't miss any legitimate spare leaves, other than the one I called that he thought he would get, and it would kind of kill the shot, so. I think that was because you called it. Yeah, no. probably. <laughs> oh, here we go. Mike Morgan needs a decent fill. And another mark. Well, that's a decent fill. Absolutely. Leave just the one and the three. Crawls to within four. Box is completed, but he's opposite a spare seven. He gets a spare. Yeah. And after nine, he's at 92. Well, he definitely needs another mark. He needs a decent fill, but he must have another mark to win this match. So again, this one's coming down to the wire here. Off target. Uh, I'm not so sure he wanted those two to go down. Oh, he has the four, seven, and ten. Okay, he must convert. Yeah, do you drive it right through the wood? Well, Mike, see, Mike's taking a look too. Yeah. You know, it almost looks like if he can catch the four and seven clean, it looks like a piece of wood next to the four that could move across. But if he clips the wood up front, who knows? All bets are off. Yeah. Uh, so he caught too much of the front one, and that will give the match right now to Brian Fuller. He'll move on to take on our team champ, Gary Santora. All right, Brian Fuller advances with the 113-108 win. We'll be back with more Candleton action right after these messages. The car to us is $30,000 Candleton Challenge. We mentioned earlier, if you folks want to get involved, you can send your postcards to the International Candleton Bowling Association at 26 South Main Street, Suite 252, Concord, New Hampshire, 03301. And now, up in lane three, our champion, Gary Santora, out of Auburn, Massachusetts. He averages a 126. Gary's uh, partner from the audience is uh, Dave De Palma. He's here watching the show. And I forgot to tell you that Brian Fuller's uh, Home viewer is Eric Haley from Manchester, New Hampshire. And Gary hasn't forgotten much. He starts off with a spare. And <laughs> not, not an all. easy one either. Watch the uh, ball take the seven pin. Wood clears out the 5 8. Wow. Takes down nine on that one. And that's 50 points for that spare for Gary. Remember, this is the two games that they can accumulate the points. And Gary just was last week, as we said, knocking off Charlie Jutras. And there's a quick 100 points for him, two spares. Wow. Gary Santora coming out, coming out on fire and ready to go. Well, you realized last week that he missed a couple single pins, one in the challengers match, one in the championship match that he thought might have cost him the match. Doesn't want to miss too many today against Brian. And that's Brian Fuller up in lane three out of East Kingston, New Hampshire. 3-6 and the 7. No wood to help. All right. That's just the 7 up. Brian Fuller averages a high triple to 4-12. 
had a personal best of 412. Now over in lane four. Has the spread eagle. Two, four, seven, three, six, and ten. And he misses both sides on that. Okay. And gets out of it with an eight box. We're going to do a uh, quick bowler's button repair here. Technical difficulty. Yeah. We're all set. We're good to go, though. Quick pick stop, pit stop. That's <laughs> record time. Sure was. <laughs> Gary Santoro, high single at 193. He's off to the left on that one. Just Making the 1, 5, 3, 9, 6, and 10. Just four on the spare, but increases his lead by... Sliding by. Just missing that head pin to the left. Nice work there. Good ten. Nice out. After three, Gary Santora is at 43. Takes three. down six on that. Yeah, one, three, seven, and ten. Just um, go after the head pin. Hopefully, uh, you're either going to split the one, three, or have the ball on the left side, have it, the ball take out the, the ten. It's just a tad heavy on the head pin. Cleared out three, left to seven. So two open frames for Brian Fuller to climb back in the match. All right, walks away with a ten box on that. After four, he's at 53. Brian Fuller up in lane three, trying to close the gap. He's down by 15. Ooh, takes down three on that one. Oh, almost. Right. Leaves the six and the 10. We'll take this time uh, on behalf of Phil and myself. I uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And we appreciate all those gifts. Absolutely. Yeah. How many did you receive? Oh, I think they're still in the mail. <laughs> I guess so. I think mine got lost. <laughs> but anyways, have a safe holiday, everyone, and uh, we wish please. you the best. Yeah, don't forget to watch the 30,000 calendar challenge, even if you're not working or on vacation. Tape it. Oh, my. Right around the seven pin. Still no mark here. Well, they're trying to urge that wood on, but I don't think it's got enough momentum uh, to carry the seven. Doesn't. It's a nine and 36. So a 17 pin advantage for our champion, Gary Santora. After four, it is at 53 to 36. There you see the replay there. There's no luck on that one at all for Brian. Gary Santora has the high five. 729. Takes down eight there. I stand correct. It takes down nine there as that one falls late. But he leaves the eight pin. <laughs> okay. And. Uh, Got a really roadblock out in front. He's going to have to like hit a this. a force out there. Yeah. Try to cap it up high. Oh, oh off the wall. Does go for him. Break there coming off the wall. At the five, he's at 63. And you see a replay. Almost came up high enough to turn the wood, but it came off the right side wall. Whatever works. Oh, just barely caught the head pin. Ooh, he's they're still tumbling with, down for him, though. Going to get away with six. He has a triangle over to the right, six, nine, and 10, plus the seven. Now he's gonna to try to catch a little bit of that wood, drive the ball into the triangle, and hopefully the wood would spin across for the seven pin. Let's see if it happens. Oh. Wow. He has the seven and the 10. Nasty split. Over to seven, gets it to go. All right, he takes down nine on that one, and after six, he's at 78. Now, Ryan Fuller takes down seven. Now, if this looks more difficult than it is, he has the four, eight, and ten. If he hits the four pin, he's got a piece of wood that has a chance to cover that ten pin. Goes to the four. Oh. Oh, he doesn't get that ten to go. It's a break. He's hit a few here in this match, and he hasn't been able to come up with the first mark. 
Not that he hasn't given it a good run, though. Brian's waiting for that wood to settle. Ooh, it's off to the right. Brian, with just 45, 24 pin deficit right now he's facing. Oh boy. Ooh, that's tough. Yeah, he's got hit. the spread eagle plus the eight hiding back there. Hit the object pin, the head pin, just too full. Light hit there, oh. get some action. All right. He's got the eight and the 10. Times you just keep your composure, keep hitting the object pin. Good things are bound to happen. It's 54. All right. After six, it is 78 54 again. Gary Santora leads by 24. We have to take a break. We'll be back with more candle pin action right after this. American Car Care Center's $30,000 Pendleton Challenge. Up in lane three, our champion, Gary Santoro. Oh, Ooh, boy, he wants the nice seven. Shot. The seven does go for him late, and he has the 10 standing. He buried that ball in the one three. Looked like he was going to be left with the seven ten. Seven finally went. Trying to stay Ooh. away from the wood. Just missing the spare on that yeah. to the right. I don't know if that wood would have carried it or not. Well, well that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. He lost away with the 10 box, though. Didn't miss it by much, but after seven, he's at 88. Uh, back on the head pin, and another nine pin drop, another 10 pin. We have the Pro Tour coming up January 12th and 13th at American Lanes. For more information, you can call 508-757-2155. Oh, wow. It's not going to go. It's not going to go. Can you imagine that? Welcome to the game of Candleton Bowling. You never know. Sometimes those pins dance around and kind of laugh at you back there, don't they? I'll tell you, he's going to be haunted by that 10 pin. That's two in a row now that cost him a mark. After eight, Gary Santoro's at 98. Oh, Ryan Fuller oh, takes down seven. He has a high triple of 412. Also coming up, the senior tour, January 19th and 20th at Dolorama. More information, call 508-627-4883. Brian walking away with the 10 box. After seven, he's at 64. Still looking for his first mark. Yeah, he's been on. He's his... a four horseman to the left. Yeah, he's been hitting his object pin. That's the first time, I think, in a long time he's missed a head pin with the first ball, but he just can't seem to uh, convert. Hit a few, just didn't get him. Just this... misses the head pin on that. Yeah, he didn't hit that one, but. He leaves the one and seven. Just try to keep your composure and just keep firing away. Hopefully, the things will break. Yeah. 20 At this point, spin. you just kind of chip away slowly but surely. Yeah. Well, his first thing, he's got to get that first mark under his belt. He's, that'll loosen him up a little bit. But oh, like I said, he's not that he's been bowling badly. He's he hit a few spares I thought he had. After he, Gary Centura leads by 26, 98 to 72. Takes down six there. Not an easy spare leave here. Three, uh, two, four, seven on the left, and the ten pin. Got to split the two and the four. No, nope, heavy on the two. So he'll be open yeah. in the ninth. He's giving Brian a few chances here. Brian is unable to capitalize. Just seven, 105. <laughs> Gary averages a 126. Pulls out of Colonial Lanes in Worcester, Massachusetts. Takes down six there. Well, the points are easy. It's 150 points for uh, Gary so far. Three yeah. marks and uh, none for uh, Brian. Wow. Ooh. And he's going to be open the last five frames. So, again, a couple marks by Gary, and he's right back in this match. 
Oh, great out. Great oh. 10 box. Well, they fall for him late. <laughs> Wasn't sure they were going to go for him. After 10, Gary Santoro is at 115. He just catches the three, the two pin, I should say. And there's a big mark. That'll break there the ice. There you go. Ryan Miller Fuller. Just a matter of time. We'd be a bit surprised if he threw another one. He needed that. Just as good. Takes down eight. Leaving the kingpin Five and nine. nine. Oh, spare on strike, and we've got that a match, folks. Huge. Right back at him. Down by 13. But he's still got a ball to come. So he can cut it under 10. Anything over three. What a finish! What a finish! Unbelievable! Brian Fuller! At the 10, he was 115 to 112. Gary Santoro only leads now by three. You have to come back and check out more Canelfin action right after these messages. Interesting stat here. This is why this point system is so interesting. Um, Brian lost the first game, 115 to 112, but he picked up 350 points, 150 points, and he hasn't let up yet. Now let's, let me just explain how we got to 350 points. He had a strike in the ninth, which is 100 points. He got a spare in the tenth, which is 50 more points. We give him another 50, uh, 100 points for the strike on spare, plus we give him a 100 point bonus for two marks in a row. So that's how we finished up spare, a strike, spare, strike, and gives him a total of 350. Uh, he takes down seven on that, has a two, four, and seven. Outside, spare, spare on strike. The man's on fire, I can feel the heat. Can you <laughs> feel it? <laughs> There's another 150 points too with that strike and that spare, and he's got a chance for a 100 point bonus if he can throw another strike or spare now. I know our champ is eager to get back up on those lanes. <laughs> oh. when, when you're in the zone, you just want to get right back up there. Keep firing away. Gary Santora, the half Worcester. Oh, boy. Ooh. Takes down four. Has six still standing. Oh, oh. just five. Now that was five, really. And he that lost 15 five. pins and count in that one box. So he goes from three points ahead to 12 behind. Yeah. And plus, he's facing another spare by Brian Fuller. Well, make up a spare here. Five, eight, and nine. Wood in front of the triangle. I want to be a red line or maybe just a tad left of the red line. Yes, he does. Nicely done. Spare in the second. Remember, for winning this match, they get 750 points. So if you have that in the back of your mind with Brian or Gary, you can kind of put things together. There's another strike for Brian Fuller. Oh my. Are you kidding me? Okay. At this point, I don't think there's any stop in the man. <laughs> that's actually that's six marks in a row if you carry over the first game. That's another 100 point bonus, looking for a double. I'll tell you what, he's in his own. He certainly is. Wow. He's already at 700 points. 350 the first game. He's got 350 this game. Nine throw and a strike, gives him 59 through three. And a nine. All right, after four, he's at 68. Fuller leads by 22. Gary Santora trying to close it. Oh, yes, right back in there. Four, Solid seven. eight. That's an eight fill on the spare. No panic in that delivery. Right in the pocket. Not at all. Going after the four and seven. Got to hurry. Oh. Just misses to the right. Drops some more in counties. He's off to the strike nine. Gets the 10 box, but he drops a few more. Now he trails by 23. He was actually 
Well, 24 pins ahead at one time. Yeah. It's amazing how the tie can turn in this game. Oh, in a matter of a few boxes. Yeah. <laughs> it is a funny game. Oh, big strike, All though. Right. Don't count me out. Absolutely not. Gary Santora blowing out the candles. See if Brian Fuller can answer. Oh, back on the head pin, but this time flush, driving the head pin straight back. Five and nine have also gone. Sprite Eagle plus the eight. Oh, tries, good try. Tried to split the three six and actually did that. Caught the uh, seven pin. Takes out the two. All right. A eight box to Ryan Fuller. guys are on fire. I'll tell they, you. Uh, I'll tell you what. Nope. Burning up the wood. Four in the eight. Another spare. Another, Another spare. spare point. For Brian Fuller after six. He is now at 86. And he leads by 22. Strike. Okay, folks, this is the first time we've had this uh, this scenario here. If he throws another strike, he gets 500 bonus points. This is a huge wow. ball. A huge ball. Of course, he'll get the 100 points for each of those strikes as well. So this ball is worth 600 points. He can throw another one. Uh, he's off to the left just a little bit, oh, no. leaving the four horsemen to the right. One, three, six, and ten. It's important that he gets this mark for a 100-point bonus. Got it. Got it. And he gets it. Fair on strike. After six, it is 89-86. Gary Santora leads by six. And we'll come back with all the total points, so stay tuned because you don't know how this one is going to end. Caucus and his $30,000 candle pin challenge. Gary Santora now leads by six after being down 23 after three boxes. Okay, and just to catch you up on the points right now, both bowlers, whoever wins this match, will vault over Charlie Jutras into third place in the points. Now, the loser has a chance to jump over somebody, too. So there's a lot at stake here, not only the match, but these points. And these points are really racking up fast here. They sure are. And this match is flipping back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, and Brian will now fill a spare on the third, uh, on lane three. And there you see the point total so far. Um, Charlie, I'm sorry, but you're, you're going down. <laughs> They're going to jump over you, but uh, Dave who's going to jump over farther? That's that's the thing right yeah, now. Dave Dupree is out there bad. I yep. mean, out there way out there with 2350. Dave Arlett, 1600. 1600's in jeopardy, too. Yeah. Both of these bowlers could ellipse that, so. Okay. All right, Let's now up in lane three, Brian Fuller, who's been hot, real hot. Okay, off target. It's a five fill on the spare. Gives him 91 through six. Outside, that close to another one. Leaving the nine and ten. He uses that wood, gets the nine, but just misses the ten. And after seven, Brian Fuller is at 100. Taking to the century mark. Oh, cool. Ooh, Hole on the head pin, spread eagle. Oh, no, it's not going to go for him. He has the two, four, and seven with some wood to play with the front. And he gets everything. That's a 10. He's at 650 points, I believe, at this point in the match. Of course, there's a 750-point bonus hanging out there, whoever wins the match. So. Now after eight, Brian Fuller is at 110. However, Gary Santoro only leads by one. And there's 
uh, six more. So that pushes the lead four in this game and three that he had in the first game. So it's a seven pin, I believe, advantage at this point. It's opposite of nine. Matches that nine. And it is seven pins. Gary Santora has come all the way back. He was leading by 23. That's amazing. That he was amazing. down by, I'm leading by 23, down by 24, I believe, came back. Now, uh, I don't know, but he's up by seven <laughs> now, folks. Bottom line. <laughs> this has been back and forth. I know, he takes down nine on that one. Non-stop action here at the Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. Well, if you're watching this on Saturday, call your friends and watch it on Sunday, too. This is a great one. Now, tell them to tune in. Yeah, spare in the eighth. So after eight, it is 114 to 110. Gary Santora leads by seven. You see there on the scoreboard, we'd like to thank CompuScore and Lowell Vermont for that scoreboard. Okay. Brian, has got to put some marks up. Must mark, preferably two. Can't bank on Gary Santora giving him a break on that fill. <laughs> no, he can't. Oh, this is spare in the ninth. Really needs a, a good fill and another mark. Just don't forget, Gary is leading by seven, but he has a spare up in the eighth, so he's in, going to increase that lead in the ninth frame. After nine is at 120. Takes down six. Two, four, five, seven. A must spare. Got it! He's amazing. Wow. He is amazing. What a match. The man is focused. This guy's refusing to go down. One, Both bowlers are refusing one, to go down. 136 and a ball. And seven, eight. eight. 144. 256. Most impressive. Brian Fuller averages a 112. Okay, Gary Santora needs a 141 to tie, a 142 to win. And that puts him in a position to do just that. Very nice. Another strike for Gary Santora. Wow. Well, this has been a great match. It, it's been a, a fantastic match. Gary is really going to have to do something really. Uh, he's really going to put you to strike. And it's not going to happen. I think that may be enough. But see, right now, they're thinking points. I mean, I think he realizes with that fill, he's probably got the match in hand. But he wants points because he's going to jump over people. He takes down seven with that. Taking his time. Rises single, snaps the wood out of the gutter, but gets an eight fill, and he's at 142 right now, and at Nine, least 150. And Gary Santoro wins 267 to 256. Welcome back. American Caucus Center's $30,000 candle pin challenge. Dan, what a match. Gary Santora remains our champion, but just barely beating Brian Fuller 267 to 256. You think you're on a roller coaster? I mean, this match went back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, yours is mine. I'm going to take it. No, you take I, it. I know. We couldn't, Unbelievable we couldn't tell until the end. Some great shot making. We told you at the top of the show he was going for the top three in total points, and he made out 1450. He did, did. He had to get by Mike Morgan first of all, though. And um, uh, with Brian, and Brian seemed to, you know, he got a couple marks and he held off uh, Mike Morgan somewhat. It didn't seem like he was that explosive. And I'll tell you, he was down by 26 pins to Gary Santora after eight boxes in the first game. And all of a sudden, strike, spare, strike, back in the match. He actually goes up by 20 some pins against Gary Santora. Gary, what does he do? He comes back with a double strike and a spare and another strike and a spare later on and i'll tell you this what a match this one was totally out of control all right right now let's bring up michael morgan first 
Talk to him briefly. Mike, congratulations. Yeah. Now, you just flew back in town this morning. Well, I don't know. Was I here? <laughs> no, you're here. You, you made your presence known for sure. Well, you know, I didn't bowl that good, but, you know, give Brian credit. His first time on, he was relaxed. I mean, I just didn't bowl good, and he did what he had to do. What time was your flight this morning? I got into Boston at 9.20, and I got here at, like, maybe 20 or 11. But that's that's no excuse. I just didn't bowl good. Just as I know, how did you guys do in the World Tournament? Uh, we finished third. We bowled well. We had Excellent. Congratulations. Great. Thank you very much. All right, well. So there was just two teams better than you? Well, this week anyway, but, you know, we really, we had a great week. We clicked, we clicked pretty well, so, you know, we lost with a 1953 to a 2025, so we bowled good, we got beat. How many matches do you bowl during the week, Mike? I probably bowled between warming up and the singles tournament, maybe 50 strings, 60 strings, so I, I need a little rest, I think, right about Does that now. affect you? My fingers are sore, but I just, emotionally, I really wasn't into it. I mean, I... I, I can't explain it. I don't want to make any excuses. I, I just didn't bowl good. I mean, you know, I'm drained right now, mentally more than physically, but... And you know. your arm is probably a little longer than the other My arm's one. not so. Uh, no, really? Just my fingertips. Well, right. here's some cab hey, fare. Hey, thanks for the uh, shirt. Nice shirt. Congratulations <laughs> again. So Mike, much. always a pleasure. Thank we appreciate you. your time coming on down. Now let's bring up Brian Fuller, a challenger, a gamer, no doubt. Huh. Congratulations, man. Excellent job. Now, I tell you what, I thought you were going to win this one. As a matter of fact, I really don't know how you lost. You had nine marks. Yeah, he's doing pretty good. You but must have been feeling good. Did you think he was going to be able to come back and beat you like that? I don't know. Anything can happen. That's the funny thing about this game. Anything you know, first, can happen. First time on TV, a uh, few butterflies that first string. Yeah. You seem to uh, shoo away the butterflies uh, in that ninth frame of that uh, a championship match when you threw a strike spare and then a strike on it. At that point in time, you think, hey, I'm back. Yeah, kind of, but I just tried to hold on. You know, the way I look at this match, this match is probably the difference was one ball. You each had nine marks. Unfortunately for you, Gary threw the double strike, and that's probably the difference in the match. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man, excellent performance. I, you know, I got to give you a lot of credit. Excellent job. Dan, you have a check for him from the International hey, Federal Bowling mention, Association. But don't tell him, but I, I beat your uncle and your dad one time. But don't tell him I he said that. He mentioned that, that right. on yeah. air earlier today, by Great the way. Great bowling. Great bowling. Congratulations. And now let's bring up Gary Santora. Gary, come on up. Congratulations, Gary. What a match. Quite a performance. Oh, that was a good match. I mean, when, when he threw the, the strike spare strike to end this at the first string, and then started the second one off with a strike. I thought I was in big trouble. And at one point, you were down by 23 or 24 pins. I mean, how did you come back? Just got to keep firing. I got the double, and, and, you know, that's got me back into it. Yeah, the double, you must have been, okay, I'm right back in this when you nailed the double. Yeah, I was. I was over through the next one a little bit, but still managed to make the spare. Kept you, me alive. You also managed to get in the top three in total points. That's good to hear. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are probably rooting for you now. There's one guy that isn't, and that's Charlie Jutras. You, yeah. vault, you vaulted over him. You almost caught him last week, but you did catch him this week. So you're in the running for that 15 grand. 1,450 points, not bad. I don't know if it's going to be enough or not. You never know. But uh, maybe next week we can improve on that. Let's see. Time will tell. You know, you, being down by 20, you, you have never had a sense of urgency. You never panicked. And you threw that first strike. Were you thinking another striker saying, look, just hit the head pin and hope for the best? I was really looking for the double because I knew I needed it to get back in. And even more impressive then. I usually look for a double. I punch the half Worcester. So <laughs> <laughs> great bowling, great bowling. Another check for a couple hundred dollars. And uh, maybe we'll see you back at the end of the season. But next week, uh, we got a couple new challengers coming in. Okay, yeah, I hope to make it by the end of the season. We'll see. You know, maybe I can improve on this a little. Great. Right, congratulations, Gary. We'll see you next week. Thanks. All right, Dan, we have a, that was a great match again. We have a couple of new bowlers challengers coming next week. Yes, I, I just happen to have the list with me. Uh, next week we're having uh, Joe Hall and Tim McGough coming in. And that should be another interesting challengers match. And of course, we'll see if uh, Gary can make it two in a row. All right, well, thanks a lot, Dan, and thanks for joining us. Happy holidays, everyone, and we'll see you next time on the American Cockhead Center's $30,000 Panel Pin Challenge.
right, it's Canopin. 